Okay. So, still in 15.3, I've taken a problem from the text. It's number 18. It says, find the area inside of r equals 1 plus cosine theta, but outside of r equals 3 cosine theta. Okay. And I've given you a lovely picture of those two curves. So here are my rules for polar curves. In 3b, you learned all sorts of formulas. If the formula looks like this, the shape looks like this, and it's called this thing. I don't care that you know most of them. The exception would be this one right here. Anything that's just r is a multiple of cosine theta or r is a multiple of sine theta, you want to recognize that that's just going to be a circle that touches the origin and opens on the x or y axis, or and is centered on the x or y axis. Circles don't open. Okay. But something like this, I don't expect you to have memorized that that's a cardioid. What I do expect is that given a formula and a graph, you can work with those pieces together to set up a problem like this, basically to find the limits of integration. <laughs> so if I take a look at what area I want to find, it's got to be inside of this cardioid, but outside of this circle. So it looks like we're looking at this region right here. And I am just going to double the top area. Okay. I think finding um, both of them would be twice as much work. I'm going to just find one and double it. OK. Now, when I find area, I know that in general, area is the double integral over my region D of 1 dA. But I'm going to be describing this in polar coordinates. So I need to recognize that that's going to become the integral over appropriate limits of 1. But then dA is r dr d theta, so that my integrand is actually going to become r. Okay. And a lot of our work is going to be in figuring out what are the limits of integration. Okay. So we're looking at this piece right here that we're just going to double. So let me draw a blow up of that piece. Here's our circle, and here's our cardioid. I can see there are two places where the two curves intersect. For this place, I'm going to try to share, find a theta value where the same theta puts both curves at the same points. This point I've got to be careful with because that's the origin. And when r is 0, that's not associated with any particular theta. So it's entirely possible that the circle is at the origin at a different theta value than the cardioid. Okay. So let's see if we can't figure out the theta value or a theta value that's going to put both curves at that particular point right there. That's going to be when the two curves are equal. So 1 plus cosine theta would have to equal 3 cosine theta. So 1 would equal 2 cosine theta cosine of theta would equal 1 half. I'm going to pick the simplest example that I can of an, of an angle that makes that true and that would put me in the first quadrant. So I'm going to let theta equal pi over 3. And then what I need to do is figure out what theta value puts me here on both curves. And it's not necessarily going to be the same one. If I look at the circle, the circle is 3 cosine theta. The first angle after pi over 3, where the circle would be at 0, would be pi over 2. So I'm going to be at this point for the circle if theta is equal to pi over 2. But that same point on the cardioid, if 1 plus cosine of theta is equal to 0, cosine of theta would have to equal negative 1. So the first theta value after pi over 3, where that happens, is going to be at pi. So same point, but on the cardioid, we're here when theta is equal to pi. Okay. So how do we deal with that? Well, this is very exciting. I can see that if I draw in theta equals pi over 3, the area that I actually want is just this area here that's inside of the cardioid but outside of the circle. But if I were to integrate for the cardioid from pi over 3 all the way to pi, I'd include that piece. So we're going to need to subtract that piece. <laughs> 
So, when we set up our integral, first of all, I'm going to remind us that we said we were going to double this top half. So I'm going to get two copies of basically this area minus this area. This is the area determined by the cardioid. This is the area determined by the circle. So we will have two copies of, for the cardioid, I can see that we're going from pi over 3 to pi. It is actually important that these curves are both traced in this direction. Probably should have mentioned that earlier, but the direction of increasing theta here would be like so. Okay, and then for each theta value in there, I like to draw in my constant theta rays, and then I can say, well, I'm in the region, as theta varies from 0 to the R value on the cardioid, so that's going to be from 0 to 1 plus cosine of theta. And then since we're integrating in polar, it's R dr d theta, because that's my dA. Minus, I'm going to just distribute the two. For this piece, the circle was just going from pi over 3 to pi over 2. And on the circle, I'm going to hit be in the circle as we go from 0 to the r value on the circle, which was 3 cosine theta. And then again, it's r dr d theta. Okay. So there's our setup for finding this area. That's a huge conceptual part of the problem. Now we've got to integrate it. That's going to actually be an excellent opportunity for reviewing an even power of cosine. So what I'm going to do is stop this video. In the next video, you will see this just written at the top of the board, and then we'll work out what that actually is. See you soon.